Hello, and welcome to another episode of Practical IT. In this episode, we're going to try something a little different. We are actually going to use a walkthrough from HowToForge on installing, enabling, and setting up the uncomplicated firewall in Ubuntu. Now, the interesting thing is the most recent write-up on HowToForge is for Ubuntu 15.04. So, we may be successful and we may crash and burn part way through this. Uh, the first thing we need to do is see if UFW is installed. So we would type which UFW and it is in fact installed. Next thing we want to do is temporarily switch to the super user because all the commands we're going to use are going to be super user commands so we don't want to keep typing sudo every time so we type sudo su and now you can see we are root and the prompt changes to a hash mark to enable the firewall we type ufw enable active and enabled on system startup so we are going to type in the next one ufw status verbose status active logging on and that's set to low default deny incoming allow outgoing disable routed new profiles are set to skip all right so we're going to work through some firewall entries on our uncomplicated firewall ufw allow can't type this morning 22 which is ssh and it says rule updated and the v6 means it's updated for both ip version 4 and ip version 6. now we can type ufw status and so we've got two port 22 action is allow from anywhere for both version 4 and version 6 in our little status message so we're not going to run a Web, uh, web server on this system so we're going to say ufw deny 80 and if we hit up arrow twice to get status and it separates into two sections really ip version 4 list first then ip version 6 so we're still good to go how about if we want to deny a port range some services like ftp and irc use port ranges uh, some games do the same thing so just as an example we're going to say ufw allow 6660 colon six six seven zero slash tcp so as we can see the sixty six sixty to sixty six seventy tcp was in fact added for both ip version four and ip version six if we wanted to allow a specific ip address we would type ufw allow from and then you type your ip address uh, in this case we'll do 172.16.74.144 and we've got a rule added uh, let's see we want to allow a subnet and I actually use this as a secondary subnet for testing purposes we could type ufw allow 
from 192.168.1.1 slash 24. Rule changed after normalization. Warning. Rule added. And if we did UFW status, I'll scroll back up. Anywhere on the two, I uh, on the IP specifically, and then the subnet that we specified. Okay, allow access from a specific IP address to one port. Well, let's. We could say UFW allow from 192.168.1.106 protocol TCP to any port 22. And then if we wanted to allow to a single port, we would do UFW allow to any port 80. All right, so we've covered adding rules, but what about deleting rules? Well, look at our status again first. And let's try UFW delete allow SSH. And since our specific rule doesn't exist by name, it didn't match anything, so it didn't delete anything. Let's look at our status one more time. UFW status. We'll pipe that into less. If we want to deny for the SSH port, which is 22, we have to change our command a little bit. So we would instead say UFW delete allow 22. And that's been deleted. The other way we can do this, especially if there are more complicated rules, is to do our status and have it numbered. UFW status numbered. And now, as you can see on the left hand side, our rules are numbered. So we could say UFW delete four. And we deleted from our subnet that we previously specified. What if we want to disable and reset the firewall? New type, UFW, disable. Firewall stopped and disabled on system startup. If you want to turn off UFW, reset and delete all the rules, we can do UFW, reset. Proceed with operation, yes, it is killing all of our rules. There's one other thing I want to show you. And that is there is a graphical front end for UFW. We do apt install GUFW. All right, 
So we're going to get rid of our terminal here. And we are going to come down to our menu. And if we type GUFW, it'll bring it up. If we type in firewall, it'll bring it up as well. And it wants the root password. And it will bring up a nice little graphical interface for the uncomplicated firewall. And then we can use and, and actually do the same things that we did from the command line without ever leaving the comfort of the graphical interface. So we can turn it on. We can add rules, allow, direction in, category. And this is kind of nice. So if we do audio video, we could say subcategory music, application. Uh, it only lists one, uh, but you know, if you're using something like Pandora or Spotify, you might be able to find ports and get this all set up to your satisfaction. Um, going under simple from the pre-configured tab, going under simple, give it a name, policy, allow, deny, reject, or limit, direction, in, out, or both, protocol, TCP, UDP, or both, and you specify the port or port ranges and then add it and you're good to go. So we'll say our rule is SSH, allow, direction in, protocol, TCP, port number 22, and add. And so just like when we did it in the command line, we've got rule for port 22 tcp allow in from anywhere name is ssh and we've got numbers on the side now one thing that has been listed as an annoyance and it appears that it's still true is that there isn't any good way to renumber or reorder the rules that you build in the firewall. And unfortunately, the way around that, and it appears the only way around that, is to delete them and re-enter them. Which, yes, it's a pain in the butt, is it the end of the world? No. There are a lot of things that are more difficult than they should be. But uh, life goes on. You go through it. You move on with your life. All right. I just wanted to see if there were any new revelations on how to reorder firewall rules for UFW. And... It turns out it can be done in a couple ways. The simplest is to delete the rule and re-edit. If you are comfortable editing configuration files, you can reorder this way as well. Please, please always back up your configuration files if you are going to edit them. If you are running a virtual machine of Linux, then take a snapshot before you start making uh, big changes to configuration files. It will save your bacon and you will be a much happier person at the end. So, do you really need a firewall on an Ubuntu machine? Well, as a person with a security background, I would say, yes, you should run it on all your machines and 
just joined the 21st century. On the other hand, for new users, people that are just dabbling with Linux, the one thing you have to understand is, by default, a Linux system will have fewer ports open than a Windows system. If you have traditionally been a Windows user, then no, in comparison, it's not as pertinent that you run a firewall on Ubuntu or other Linux distributions. Once you get past the new user stage, I still absolutely recommend it. On that note, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up. If you want notifications, please click the bell icon and hopefully uh, YouTube will get the memo and send you those notifications. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. And again, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Have a great day.